Hey everybody, welcome back to Guns and Gadgets, the premier source for Second Amendment news. I have a special guest today who I will introduce here in a moment, but I want to bring your attention to some big news here. And we're going to talk specifically about Joe Biden and his ATF strike forces that he announced about uh, three weeks ago-ish, uh, and the effect that they had yesterday in one of the five locales he sent agents to. I want to first thank today's guest, Braden, from uh, Langley Outdoors Academy. Uh, did I say that right? Langley Outdoors Academy, right? Yep. Yep. Nailed All it. right, brother. Thank you for joining us. Uh, if you guys and gals watching are familiar with Braden's channel, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of cross-pollination between the two. He's got a really cool uh, two-way channel down there in, in Georgia. And uh, tell the folks a little bit about yourself, bro, and uh, what your channel covers. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. Well, at first, I just want to say thanks for having me on. I mean, like a lot of, uh, as I mentioned in our private chats, like a lot of our viewers are kind of cross-pollinated, so they've said we should get together. So it's really cool to actually actually get together on some stuff. But um, yeah, we cover very similar stuff. So like it's about the Second Amendment. It's about our rights. It's about the amazing gifts that we have and something I refer to on my channel as the blessing of the Second Amendment, right? Because a lot of countries don't just flat out don't have it right and that's a very very amazing piece to our rights that ensure other rights right so one of the things that we focus on on our channel is very very similar to you jared is we we really dive into the not only hey here's where we're at but what's the why behind what they're doing why are they doing this why are they doing that specific manner like really getting into the, the kind of the nitty-gritty of what's going on here and what are the odds what are the not odds and what do we have to do to affect change because a big thing that we focus on, man, is we have a lot of power as citizens, as constituents that a lot of people don't recognize that we have. And the more information's out there, the more support that we have for our rights, the more we can affect change in the positive direction, specifically for the Second Amendment, which I know that you guys have hit on as well. Absolutely. And it's it's I think it's a, a strength that we have that a lot of people are, I guess, not naysaying. But they're giving mm -hmm. up on it. A lot of people don't want to oh, do the, uh, the phone calls or the emails or go out and see their uh, representatives to hold them accountable, which is giving them a lot more leeway to do some of the shenanigans that they've been doing. Oh, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's and that's you're hitting on something so important is because like collectively, if you just say a million people. Right. Like, because we both have pretty amazing followings. Our, our subscribers are incredible. They drive this whole thing and be. And if we just look at everyone that we have together in unison, like we can make a tremendous impact. Like, could you imagine a thousand people calling, 10,000 people calling? I mean, that, that's a big deal. And the power of us going the same direction and unified is, is something. It really is awesome. And I wish more people would, uh, would, would be open to it because I have talked to people in on Capitol Hill in senators' offices and in uh, congressmen and women's offices saying, hey, look, you know, uh, we've gotten 4,000 people calling. We've gotten 4,000 postcards. It absolutely mm -hmm. makes an impact. Now, can we sway yes. every vote by barking? No. no. Uh, but we can let them know we're out here. And especially times like now where people are looking for the next paycheck when they want their, right. you know, their to be reelected, that's when we mm -hmm. tend to be a little more powerful as a group. So. Again, thanks for taking time. I know your schedule's nuts today. Uh, mine is too. I got my <laughs> yeah. kids barking down my door here, and and we're literally. Mm -hmm. I just heard rumble outside. So if y'all pick up thunder, I apologize. It's been crazy. So I want to bring. I got a couple notes here. Um, actually, you know what? Let me uh, let me share the screen. Let me see if I can pull off a a, a miracle here and uh, a technological miracle. <laughs> yeah, dude. Sometimes I I look great, and other times it makes me look like a buffoon. But all right. So I'll blow it up for folks because I realize mm -hmm. that uh, it'll shrink. And then I will bring up this first story. So last night, well, actually yesterday morning at about I don't know, 550, you can see the story here. This is a Chicago Channel 7. Uh, so leading into this story, quick background. Uh, on June 23rd, Joe Biden sat in the Rose Garden and told everybody he was going to send strike forces of ATF agents into locales, specifically uh, Chicago, New York, Los Angeles, the California Bay Area, and D.C., to work hand-in-hand -hand with local PDs to get uh, the bad guys with guns off the street. Which is interesting because I thought there were no guns in those five locations. No, I know. I mean, we can't say I thought that. we had taken care of that. Yeah, I can't say that Chicago is the, the king of, of gun control, but here we are. Jeez. So... Two agents, two ATF agents and a Chicago police officer were shot at 5.50 a.m. Uh, during an investigation. Now, I have here, I will uh, 
give you a quick little rundown of the investigation. They're not releasing a lot of stuff for obvious reasons. Um, but the police were fall when an unmarked car in plain clothes following a quote unquote gun suspect when the shooting took place, according to several law enforcement sources. Now, the shooter sa is said to have opened fire on the tail car, wounding all three plain clothes investigators. Uh, so what happened was uh, the cops were trailing. Let me go back to us. The cops were trailing a, a suspect in, in a gun case with these ATF agents and they were made. They were undercover, but they were made. So 100%. they noticed a yeah. They noticed a white. Uh, I actually got the make and model. Um, they noticed a, a a white. I think it was an Impala that was trailing them. They took note of the license plate, and right shortly thereafter, that car pulled up to the side of the vehicle. Driver's side window rolls down. Driver starts shooting. Uh, all three were hit. Uh, one ATF agent was shot in the hand. The other one in the arm. And the Chicago officer was either. Uh, shot with a bullet or glass, but it was a graze wound to the back of the head. They're mm -hmm. all stable. Now, a manhunt ensued, obviously. Which and, is good. Yeah, yeah. So this just was about an hour ago. This this update came in, and I will uh, get this up for everybody so you can actually see the news source so you don't think that we're just making this mm -hmm. stuff up. So the U.S. Attorney's Office uh, has filed criminal charges in federal court against a 28-year-old man, um, and that's his information is out there in public. But uh, according to the criminal complaint, two ATF agents and an ATF task force officer were driving in an unmarked vehicle uh, early Wednesday when participating in an investigation on Chicago's south side. The officers noticed a white Chevrolet sedan was following their vehicle. They took note of the plate, like I said, uh, and then it pulled up alongside of them, started shooting. Uh, one that goes over the same injuries we just talked about. Um, so the long and the short of it is that they saw this vehicle parked on the side of the road, and then they, uh, the person was still in the driver's seat. They locked him up. And, of course, here's a quote from Circle Back Saki, because Joe Biden was actually visiting Chicago <laughs> yesterday. Circle Back says, we stand ready to provide any assistance needed. Our thoughts go out to the ATF agents and the Chicago Police Department officer who were wounded, as well as their families and fellow agents and officers. Now... So that's a direct result of Joe Biden's mm -hmm. ATF strike forces. Uh, and they've only 100%. been out for a couple of days. Um, mm -hmm. so what's your take on that scenario so far? All right. So this is crazy. <laughs> like legitimately, this, this is crazy. So of course we know that the, that Biden came out and he put out to those five cities. They're all gun control cities. And it's basically like, we're going to fix the gun problems in the gun control cities. Well, okay. For like, we did a video on our channel. I was like, well, why are we sending ATF agents to fix gun problems in gun controlled cities when the gun control is supposed to be the solution to those said problems. So right. we, we covered that, right? That's kind of the obvious low hanging fruit. The big thing that I got a, just an interesting vibe on, on this, like the, so Biden comes out, sends, ATF strike forces to gun running cities because that's what they're saying. They're focusing on trafficking, right? right? So at this point, I'm like, okay, so so the people who are running guns, they understand that the ATF is coming. And so their solution is not to run and hide like typical criminals will do. Their solution is to take on the force of the federal government directly with force, right? right? And so the the crazy part for me is like, I'm getting like flashbacks to prohibition. Like, I mean, like that was my initial, my initial gut reaction was if you look back to Elliot Ness and you look back in prohibition and like through that entire time frame of the untouchables, that's exactly what initiated the, the clampdown in Chicago of Elliot Ness from that movie was right. if you recall in the beginning of that movie, there was a bomb that went off and innocents were killed, but it was based on, the la the the uh, alcohol running because it was illegal, but they still wanted to do it. Right. I'm getting so many vibes, dude. Like, I mean, something that we haven't specifically said, but I know we've kind of in the same vein on history repeats itself, man. Like, this is the more you clamp down and you focus on the individual issue, not on the hearts of men and women. Like, you're you're gonna have the same things that continue to occur, and that's of course where it dovetails nicely into what we're always preaching is men and women who have their rights and they're embracing themselves to defend themselves. That's a big piece of it. You know, it's like, this is bigger than just everyday running gun criminals. This is organized crime. And that's basically right. where I go down to. It's like, this is, this is much larger if you're attacking the ATF. Well, uh, you know, and I'm going to take it to the side where, I mean, most of the people who watch my stuff know that you know, I was a cop. I'm no longer, I'm going right. through the medical retirement. Uh, and I worked in some of the largest cities in this country, uh, some of the most violent cities in this country. And I will tell you that, 
the ATF isn't this magic fairy that sprinkles pixie dust. Like everybody, nope. everybody in this in that works in that PD knows who these guys are. If they are legitimate bad guys, they know about them. Why wait till now? Why wait until pop? You know, I call him Bobo, Bobo Biden. Why wait until he comes out <laughs> and has an agenda? Now we're going to stop the crime, at least attempt to stop the crime. Uh, the only way to stop violent crime is to get tough on violent crime, not to let yes. them get out of jail because of the flu, not to slap them on the wrist and say, bad, bad guy, don't go murder again. You actually have mm-hmm. to get hard on it. And, you know, I want to say that by reducing the money and or manpower in police departments, it's even more important that you yes. and I and our viewers and, and our citizen friends and sisters, you know, brothers and sisters, they all start to take it serious and to oh. prepare to defend yourself. That is what the Second Amendment's for. And if you if you think you can count Absolutely. on the government, you're going to end up hurt. There's a whole history that says you can't count on governments across multiple nations, multiple people groups, multiple demographics, multiple religious backgrounds. You look anywhere in the world, you can say you can't look on the government. Yeah, there I mean, isn't like much, legitimately. Yeah, there isn't much that the government has has like put their hands on that they haven't screwed up. In fact, correct. It's probably they probably screwed and that, up everything they've touched. Uh, most of the things. I mean, like, and and the crazy part is like you can even look into like because a lot of the stuff we talk about on my channel is we dive into what's actually happening underneath the surface, right? So I'm sure you're aware. Forty million guns were sold in 2020 alone to the civilian populace. Right. I mean, that's that's crazy. That's 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 beyond levels. Like I did a video recently where they were saying like, oh, gun sales are going down for Smith and Wesson. It was only the second best June on record. What? Like, you know, what I mean, like people are taking taking the Second Amendment and their self protection seriously. Like they really are diving into it. And I mean, if you and this is just something that I like to look at on this kind of stuff. If you look at all the swing states of the 2020 election, the amount of people that bought guns is significantly greater than the amount of people who were margin of victory for Biden. So I mean, like there's, it's crazy. And that's even if you take the 40% that are new gun for like the first time gun buyers and specifically they were females and they were minorities. Those are key demographic voting blocks. And if you're looking at that and you kind of extrapolate out a little bit, like, hold on a second, people are picking some stuff up. Like they're, they're getting it. Yeah, and, and I think it's important for those of us in the gun community to realize that, yeah, we have 8 million new gun owners in the last six months, but they're not all on, we're not all the same. We're not robots. Like everybody has their own right. views. Uh, maybe it's a 50 year old black female because the blacks and the females are the two biggest uh, gra- you know, demographics that are, are bu- purchasing firearms. Maybe. <laughs> That person has decided. Look, you know, I've seen I've seen my neighborhood burned down. I've seen the you know nothing being done about it. I'm going to take care of myself. Maybe right. they are a Democrat voter and have been for whatever uh, for whatever reason. Just Maybe because so. they're a gun owner now, guys and gals, we can't like demand that they think that we do. Right, the same way we do. <laughs> you're now but exactly like me. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly yeah. It, it's exactly right. it. But it's it's on us to start educating them. Of all right, now mm-hmm. you're now you're on our team but know why you're on the team. Some of these things that have been done for X amount of years, this is why they're being done is to take away guns. The end end game is to disarm the populace. And that's, Mm -hmm. that's the job of all of us, not just, you know, the YouTube land or the internet land. It's legit. Talk to your neighbors, take them out shooting, start those conversations because we're getting to a time in this country's history where your neighborhood folk might be really, really important to the survival of your neighborhood one day. So, Start making those conversations now because uh, yep. you don't want to wait until it's too late. Well, it's it's relationships. And that actually dovetails into the one of the things that we're going to talk about is relationships with your senators, with your representatives. Like, what are you actually impacting? Like this this ATF director position is a is a perfect example. It's on the fence. What's going to push left or right? You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it, it's it's important. Every one of us is, is important. And let's jump right into that. So. Chippy, as I like to call him, um, there, there's a report that's come out this week, and I just literally just dropped a video about it today. Um, there's a lot of stuff that we've we've known about, and we a lot of us have chronicled anyway. But oh, there's yeah. a new whistleblower that's come out uh, that is may or may not be an active ATF agent. Um, so uh, the world right now is is closing in on him. And what mm-hmm. we really need to know is what is he hiding? Because he's hiding some stuff. He's deleted uh, his 
you know, 1,700 tweets plus on his Twitter. He scrubbed his uh, Facebook prior to the nomination being public. Uh, there's more stuff to this cat, and there's a lot that's being said inside the ATF, like some equal opportunity uh, violations, some racist comments that he was saying about a group of black uh, agents who passed uh, a promotional exam on how they had to be cheating to pass. Uh, there's a lot that's coming out against this dude, not to mention that he actively works to violate the Second Amendment. Right. And that's and see, like, it's, it's interesting because there's so many facets. And this is this is kind of like a like a microcosm of what we you and I deal with every single day. It's like it's, there's so much stuff. How do you focus in on the point that people need to know that people it's important to know and what is actionable? Right. And and that's exactly right. Like in kind of the way I approach this nomination is it's quite obvious the purpose of this nomination. Like that is it. <laughs> anybody who's paid attention to the gun world in general knows this guy is from Giffords.org enough said <laughs> just because you know, Giffords.org. But then you start looking into his individual background and you start saying, like you look at his Senate confirmation testimony, which by the way, they were split. So that's going to, that goes into some interesting dynamics of the actual Senate, which I know we're going to talk about. But if you're, if you're just looking at him as an individual for this role, it's, it's a terrible choice. And I think it's going to backfire. I mean, I, I, it's a think. Like, I can't guarantee it. But right. there's a lot of stuff here. Like, to your point, there's the personal stuff. There's the individual stuff. There's the ATF stuff. There's the working dynamics. There's all sorts of leaks. It's, it's just messy as can be, man. And really, it's like, what can we do, you know? No, it's funny because if, even if you you don't even have to take the previous president who, in and of itself, the Trump, <laughs> Trump uh, presidency is, is going to raise – all kinds of people's blood pressure. So oh, yeah. go, go any insert, any Republican president now into this scenario. If they appointed Joe blow from Mumbolo to be the director of the ATF and all this stuff came out about Joe blow, the media would be going crazy calls oh, not God. for him, his removal, but calls for his head would be out there because oh, yeah. don't forget we're so woke now as a country but you have this guy who's <laughs> saying potentially racist things, um, you know, so maybe some sexual uh, violations. That's usually what EEO is. It's either racism or mm -hmm. sexuality, usually. Um, it's usually a no-no. Yeah, yeah, usually a no-no. Usually <laughs> yeah. it's pretty bad. Um, it's not great. But, if, I mean, if it was a Republican candidate, things would be, like, going crazy. They would be burning down stuff oh, to stop yes. the nomination. Oh, oh absolutely. So, so let's play into this. So uh, I'm, I'm watching this stream and I'm like, yeah, what can I do? Um, what would you tell mm -hmm. somebody how they can get involved to help stop this dude from getting nominated? I mean, this is something that we talk about on our channel all the time. On my mm -hmm. channel, like every single video, one of the underlying themes is as individuals, we have more power than we're being told we have. Flat out. If right. you are calling every single day, if you are emailing every single day, someone that has an impact on someone eventually that will trickle up. Now I know and like I'm just being fully transparent. There's obviously some issues across the board with 2020 and how it worked out and the outcomes and the different nuances of what occurred and what didn't occur. And I'll be honest, we aren't going to know all those things. We right. just simply aren't because we're civilians and I'm, I want to, but also at the same time, I'm not going to encourage anyone to say, oh, well, it's over, throw it into the wind because this could have potentially happened or it did happen, right? right. Something that you kind of have to dance on is like, okay, fine. So let's just say worst case scenario and kind of war game that out a little bit. Worst case scenario, your biggest fears on the planet occurred. Okay, well, then the only one thing you can do, you can either give up or you can overwhelm any potential negative outcome by sheer numbers. And that's right. what I aim to do, right? So say there was a 10% differential or a 2% differential. Okay. Show up and show up in 15%, make it impossible. Right. And that's, and that's something that is ingrained in us as Americans. Like we overcame the impossible to begin our nation. We overcame the impossible, right? That is not something that's foreign. That is not something unusual. That is something that we have simply forgotten. Absolutely. And we will remember that because we are, we are a completely unique experiment. And there's a reason that we get all the heat. It's because we're the one outlier. And every single time that one of us reaches out, every time one of us makes a YouTube video, every time one of us passes a YouTube video on, we all have our own unique gifts and blessings. 
but it's how we drive and we do not give up. And that's the biggest thing is do not give up because your voice matters. That's what I tell my people. Absolutely. I think teamwork is, is, is huge on this, uh, on this field we're playing on. Uh, Cause like you said, your video has a decent reach, but it's not enough. My video has a decent reach, but it's not enough. What we need is right. the people we're reaching to take action. You know, we can yes. talk all day long and run live streams until they cut us off. But if people aren't taking action on some of the things we're bringing to their attention, it's all for naught. Oh, a hundred percent. And I mean, and, and I'll be completely honest with you, Jared, like one of the things that we've been not, I wouldn't say struggling with, but one of the things I've seen very common in my comments on my videos, particularly around ATF director, particularly around voting, particularly around making your voice known is it's a very big theme of, I feel defeated and, and I get it. I completely get it. Like we're on the back foot right now, but also you have to look at what we've accomplished while on the back foot. I mean, like you and I can run down all day long of HR eight and 1446. Those got stuffed. Right. I mean, Schumer was banging his proud horse of it will come to a vote because a vote is what we need. That's exactly what he said. Hasn't been on the floor yet. Right. He made fun of McConnell for the fact that, well, if they didn't want to do anything. Neither is Schumer. And that's where you get into the very interesting dynamics of something that you and I cover, the dynamics of the Senate. Like, for example, Susan Collins came out and said she's not supporting him. Flat out said it. It made news headlines. That's huge. Well, the reason usually will swing. Exactly. And the reason that's so huge is it's a narrow margin. It's a knife's edge. And for him to lose, and when I say him, I mean Biden, for Biden to lose Susan Collins, one of the rhino kind of wishy-washy Republicans, well, that means he's got to lock down 100% of Democrats. Right. That means Democrats that are in red states have to vote for an anti-gun nominee. That's not as easy as it sounds. That's why they were targeting Republicans, because right. Democrats, they were looking for cover. They don't have it anymore. And that, I'm glad you said that because it's one of the things we wanted to talk about. If, if you all watching, listening, however you get this information, if you happen to live in a pro-gun state, you know, I like to call the free states here in America, uh, you need to be reaching out to your senators. No matter who they are, no matter what party they are, please do not make the mistake and taking for granted, well, Joe Manchin always votes pro 2A. Stay on them. Ensure it. Ensure it. absolutely need Joe Manchin to vote 2A on this one. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, whatever you think that your senator will usually do, you need to make sure. Ensure it. Call their bluff. Yep. Call on them to, to, you know, you need accountability. And if we don't do absolutely. it, then they're going to play their backroom politics that they always play in the mm -hmm. chamber. And, you know, wink, wink, nod, nod. You know, I'll give your wife right. a job, Joe Manchin, if you pull through on something right. later. And we know that's a case already, so we need to be yeah. watching that. And so that's and that's the piece where I know that I'm, I've personally felt like this, Jared. You can confirm or deny us right from your own experience, but it's kind of been isolating. It's kind of like who's doing what? Like I know we're making videos every single day about what's going on. We're bringing people to the call, people. I know GOA is doing stuff. There's a lot of organizations doing stuff, but now the cool thing, and this, and take solace in this. We're starting to see massive investment on TV ads in very swing states like Manchin, West Virginia. Um, right. Angus is getting some pressure. We're starting to see reinforcements come along on the, in the way of things that we can't accomplish, like million-dollar ad campaigns are being put into these Senate, in these Senate race areas. But right. if you think about what that means, that means they sense opportunity. They Absolutely. wouldn't throw that much money if they thought it was a lost cause. And that's what you guys are doing to lead them to that point. It's bringing people along, even if you don't know if it's going to happen, you supporting and saying, no, I'm against this, I'm against this, I'm against this. Well, now the NSSF and the NRA is putting more money because they get such a strong reading. That comes directly from you guys, and now we're getting reinforcements. And that's, that's right. That's going to make a difference. And you all heard them correctly. The NRA is putting big dollars into ad campaigns in West Virginia. <laughs> Ooh, I'm getting excited. Demanding Joe Manchin follow through and hold on the filibuster. So if that don't tell you something that, you know, Wayne's crew is, is maybe doing something pro two a for a change. That's big news. I, that's a hundred percent. And that, and that's a big thing that I think that in the culture of the, the second amendment world, the conservative, excuse me, conservative culture, however you want to look at it. Like, even if you look at the YouTube culture, it's easy to say 
all is lost, but all is not lost. Right. The more that we set up and we get attention and we garner attention, we call our senators, we call our house representatives, amazing things can happen. HR 8 and 1446, they passed on party line vote, didn't even get to the Senate. You've got, uh, what was that? Was that 124? That was so crazy right when Biden got elected. I think it was from, I can't remember who uh, who authored it, um, but it was insane. It was like the most insane gun control. Didn't even get to the to the floor. If you recall, they, yeah. Oh God, it's insane. And then you, uh, you look at, oh, what was it? Um, Nadler, Nadler put out the packing the court for the Supreme court thing. Yeah. I mean, Penguin. even Pelosi, came, Pelosi came out and said, we're not doing that. It's suicide. Right. Yeah. That is it, because it, you guys are paying attention. There's a lot going on. And then, then on the non firearm side, HR one I mean, for HR one right. to die by the filibuster. It was huge this year. Um, oh, so God, yes. There's a lot of angry folks that have an R next to their name right now. There's a lot of people who, even, and even some of the rhinos are really, really bent right now. Um, oh, and then the Supreme Court backs up Arizona's voter laws that they just passed, and the left is going apoplectic. Oh, and then and then on top of that, once Joe Biden you know expresses his displeasure with the Supreme Court, now you see the Supreme Court like I think we had two unanimous decisions back to back from them, which is like un freaking heard of. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which actually, when I saw that, I was like, it's on. They're bent. Yeah. They're willing to make make sure uh -huh. that America knows how it's supposed to go. And we have some serious, cool uh, gun cases coming up before them. One, they've already oh, done. God. Uh, yep. and, and there's a couple that are on the doorstep waiting to see how they're going to handle them. So, uh, this, so, this so what are your two favorite? What are your two favorite? Because I got two favorites. Well, for favorites, I'd have to say the AWB ban out of California only because 100%. Massachusetts, this state sucks. And- <laughs> as Massachusetts does, California does. As California does, Massachusetts uh -huh. does. That's yeah. huge. And the um, I'd like to see them take up Young v. Hawaii because uh, yeah. that addresses shall issue versus may issue, and so does the right. New York case. So either right. one of those two shall issue, may issue cases will be huge. Uh, oh, and man, AWB. massive. But then you got the magazine restriction. That's another big case. So for me to pick my two would be – AWB and the MAG restrictions because that's going to we're, we're aligned. State. We're aligned completely for just that reason. Yep. So like one of the things that we've talked about is th like the Supreme Court, it usually avoids gun issues. Right. Completely. And for the, so far this year, they came out with they accepted the New York case. That was massive. Did you, if you and you, I mean, we did something with um, uh, oh my god, what's the What's the mayor of New York? I cannot remember his name right now. The Blasio. far left, de Blasio, de Blasio. So de Blasio comes out and goes, we spent all this time trying to keep guns out of the hands of young people in New Yorkers. Like, oh, have you? Yep. <laughs> well, you just proved their case. Thank you. Um, yep. Yeah, thanks for that, because that's going to be played in the courtroom. Um, and then the AWB with um, with the district attorney of California, like the way that the reaction, this it's so crucial. Like, it's not what happens, it's how they react. Yes, and definitely. where they send most of their firepower is where they're the most afraid. Yeah. And that New York case and that AWB man, because that goes across the nation, just like you said. Imagine all the fifteen states that ban all these different rights that are now got to rewrite their laws because it conflicts with existing law. Because California, New York screwed the pooch, and that's why I'm I'm excited. There's a little part of me that's giddy because uh, <laughs> yeah. word on the inside is is this New York case is going to come our way. Pro gun. Oh yeah, it and has to. There's, there's a lot of reaction already on the anti-gun side that they're worried and they know they're going to get dealt a defeat, and they're already trying to plan for that. So that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, which means if if words getting out already, then this stands to be a landmark case. And anytime we have a landmark right. case, it, it will it usually is accompanied with a smackdown for the districts. Uh, yep. in the circuits, which would be, which is needed because there's so many different games being played with different tests and scrutiny and all that stuff. Uh, so as long as they word it correctly, the Supreme Court, that is, as long as they word it correctly, this can set us on a different path for the next decade or two, which would be oh, really nice. That So just, I know you and I have talked about kids, like that sets up our kids for the next fight. Like, hey, hey, we did ours. You, you got the next one. <laughs> like that that's a huge thing but i mean yeah. like i said that's the future but right now we we're focused on this chipman or i can never remember this guy's name chipman, chipman. um chip chippy chip chippy but chip. man he's he's on the fence dude i, I, I it's gonna be so close so close 
Well, I want to I want to tell both of our our uh, audiences that it's really important that you reach out on this Chipman issue, and it's also mm-hmm. really important that you comment on the two comment periods that we have that the ATF oh, yeah. are trying to change things magically and mystically. Uh, as of today, I just checked uh, the the uh, frame and receiver redefinition attempt by the ATF, which is an attempt to get rid of ghost guns and eighty percent lowers and stuff like that, and reclassify AR uppers as a gun. There's all kinds of craziness. We're at 83,335 comments submitted. That is not need more. enough, guys and gals. If there are 8 million new gun owners, there should be at least 8 million comments, in my point of view. On the <laughs> pistol stabilizing brace issue, or the, the pistol brace ban is what it is, there are 114,985 comments submitted. Again, not even close to enough because in that... Um, the redefinition or the, or the proposed rule the ATF put out, they are saying in the stabilizing braces, we expect 375,000 comments. So if we don't at least meet that number, then they're going right. to say the, the response was so overwhelming, uh, underwhelming, it was less than we thought. So we need <laughs> yeah, to- even though even though the last time that they tried an AR pistol bra- brace ban, it was 80,000 comments and they folded. So it's, yeah. it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. They're well, playing games, man. They pulled that. Because there were so many vague areas in that previous proposed rule, a lot of them they shored up on this time, uh, which is yeah. why this one is extremely important that we need the numbers. Because like you said, a lot of people said before, hey, we beat them with X amount or or the green tip, we beat them with like 86,000 comments. It, this isn't like it was 10 years ago, guys and gals. If you haven't noticed that the, uh, the anti-gun movement has increased and been uh, a little more intense, then you weren't paying attention. So we need to respond appropriately. So get those comments going. I'll put a link to both of those in the description of this video. Uh, so all you gotta do is go down a link and make a comment. And just when you do comment, make sure you are following the rules that they have posted. You have to give them your full name. You have to put in your address. And I know right now people are like, well, I don't want them to know where I live. They already know you. They already know. They know. They know. If you think that they don't have a registry under the, you know, under the swept <laughs> under the rug, you're not paying attention. They know, they know what socks you wear. Yeah, they know us <laughs> all. The information's out there. So at least put your effort into doing something that's going to tell them to uh, go, you know, away. So <laughs> what do you – you're you're the one coming over here. That folks might not know you on this channel, although I know most of them do. Uh, what would you yeah. like folks over here to know about you and what you stand for? And tell them a little bit more about you, the individual, before we jump out of here. So, yeah, so, I mean – it's interesting. So one of the things that I think it's lost sometimes is people don't understand, like they don't really know the uh, the people on the other side in the same movement or potentially on the outside of the movement. Right. So like Jared, you and I both have multiple children. Right. Okay. Well, that's a commonality that we have. We live in completely different States. You live in a little more restricted state. I live kind of in the wild, wild West of Georgia. Like there's, there's a lot less rules here than there are there. But the big thing is like, we're all Americans and we're all aligned and we're all blessed with the same rights. Now, if the localities infringe upon those rights in a different ways, that's different, right? But understand, Jared's doing one thing. He does it his way. I do another thing. But we're going in the same direction. Right. Like, we may be different, but we're unified. And the big thing is, if I could say one thing, is if you like the way that Jared presents it, if you like the way that I present it, if you like either one, like both of us at the same time, like, you could watch his video, then watch my video. But the important part is, it's not whose video you watch. It's getting the content out there so we can affect this movement together. Absolutely. Right, because there's all there's all different types of gun channels out there. There's all different types of freedom groups out there. There's there's legal groups. There's so many things that you can watch, like the ACLJ. I watch them all the time, but I'm not a lawyer. Right. right. The big thing is if we can drive forward in a unified force, there's nothing that we can't accomplish. Come on by, top my channel, check out the content, leave a comment, say how you like the way Jared presented it better. I'm totally cool with that. <laughs> right. But. Or, or vice versa. But the big thing is, like, we need to become active and remember who we are. And that's something that is powerful. It's hard, but it's worth it, right? Like, we are all the same. We're driving in the same direction. As long as we're unified, we can do some incredible things. So, like, check out my channel. Check out Jared's channel. Spread it out. Facebook it. You know what? It's kind of a badge of honor. If you get blocked on Facebook for a week, put in Facebook jail, okay. <laughs> like, you know, there were ancestors 240 years ago who hadn't put in actual jail, you right. know? <laughs> so it's, 
so it's like we're we're in a very to me it's it's kind of an honor thing it's like you know what i'm i'm in good company with people that i that i share alignment with on my rights and my views and they've sacrificed much more than i have and so i'm going to try my damnedest to keep doing it and i know you guys are the same way but it's it's almost like that unlock yep. you know and it's like i'm gonna start a youtube channel and then six years later it's 450,000 people like you know share a subscriber base right 300,000 like mine but it's amazing what you can do when you when you get rid of the fear element, the fear aspect. Absolutely, man. I couldn't have said it any better. And uh, it's one of the things I like about your channel is because I've been the, I've been in for, you know, for 25 years in the LE mode that everything is just like just the facts, ma'am. <laughs> no. And when I do my stuff, even in, in everyday life, I'm just the facts. There's no fluff. There's no gray area. You know, you always know where you stand mm-hmm. with me, which is, you know, hey, it's a, it's a, one of my greatest strengths and it's also my greatest weakness. But that's why I yeah. like watching some of your stuff, even though I just did a video on it or, you know, we were in the same realm. I like your right. spin sometimes because you, you have a little more, <laughs> little more positivity than I do sometimes. Which is <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it, and it's and it's funny because it, it comes from background. It 100 percent comes from background because I was never an officer. Right. Like I am a straight through and through civilian. And my background, I started as a firearms instructor. And before that, I was I focused like my entire career was on retail and leading people. And so it was communication based. Yeah. So it's, and like that goes back to that same point, different backgrounds, but the same destination. Right. You know, we can all do some amazing things. Absolutely, man. Well, I, I really appreciate you taking time on your uh, hectic schedule to, to come here yeah. so people can realize of the couple people who watch who don't know who you are. <laughs> now they do know who you are. Um, and yeah. uh, ho- hopefully, maybe you'll let me on your channel too. And oh, uh, get we'll, over here. We'll, uh, we'll <laughs> it'll be we'll, great. We'll wrap and uh, do something cool over there too. Um, but uh, oh, guys, yeah. And, uh, no. Yeah, uh, if, if you haven't watched this channel, I'll have a link down below. Um, Braden, man, thank you so much, really. It's it's a, oh. it's a pleasure to finally get to do something with you. It's an honor to meet you virtually, and uh, hopefully we get <laughs> to see each other at one of these events and, and uh, that we all, you know, hopefully get to go to this year if oh, we don't man. pull out another lockdown. <laughs> oh, it'll it'll be inc- it'll be incredible. Just thank you for uh, for hanging. Let me come out and hang out on your channel, man. But I'll tell you what, though, I'm going to throw a gauntlet down. If Chipman gets pulled, we're ha- we got to do something. We gotta do Absolutely. something magical. Immediately, we start a party. <laughs> oh man, we'll do something. You know, I'll have streamers like hanging from my deck or whatever. But that'll be a victory, man. That'll be awesome. But I would love to love to do more of these in the future. Come on over to my channel. However we do it, I don't care. But it'll be awesome. Absolutely, man. And, and if y'all like it down below, let us know. Maybe we'll do something more regular. Um, and, yeah. Uh, again, thank you. Uh, so you all know my uh, my closing. Uh, but first, I want to say thank you again. Uh, check out his channel down below. Like, subscribe, watch his stuff. Uh, And until we see each other again, be safe, stay vigilant, and carry a weapon. Take care, everybody.